Hi, we're Two Gun Howdy. This is episode 179 featuring Pat Waters. This is Boston Chris with another great episode of the ETX Rock Show. Louise d- here. D- 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 Featuring all genres and styles of entertainment. And let me do all the ETX Rock. Let's hear from Louise, please. From the unheralded and unheard to the legends and beyond. Out of the box. <laughs> ETX Rock. It's awesome. We keep them coming. Five dollars. That's pocket change. Well, hey, y'all. This is Haley McDaniel. Are y'all ready for this? ETX Rock Show is the greatest show of all time. Okay. We are ETX Rocks. The ETX Rock Show is the best show of all time, say? The other shows, you're good, you're real good. As long as we're around, you'll be second best, say? Cut! Hey y'all, this is Tia Goins, and thank you for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. Hey guys, Boston Chris here with the ETX Rock Show. You guys should check out the Jefferson Burn Rally, which is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, October 13th to the 15th. Michelle, tell us about the Burn Rally. Hi, this is Michelle, and I'm the event coordinator with the Jefferson Burn Rally. This is what we have going on this year. We will be having live music both Friday and Saturday featuring 22 bands from three stages, including Darren Morris, Geneva, White Trash Wannabes, Captain Joe Band, Kiss Tribute Band, Love Gunners. And many, many more. That's awesome, Michelle. 22 bands, three stages, and two nights of live music. What else do you have going on? Hello, Boston. We have vendors, food vendors. We have R32 stunt team. We have a poker run, a trivia walk, and first time ever, we have the Dino Drag contest. And much, much more. That is amazing. And Michelle, I heard that you have something going on with motorcycles. Yes, we have motorcycle games, and we have a bike show as well. The event goes through till Sunday, and we have a church service for all bikers that we like to attend 10 a.m. With the CMA. And so how much is it to get into the Jefferson Burn Rally? It's only $20 and it's an all access wristband. So you can pay $20 and come out anytime all weekend long. All weekend long. Awesome. Okay, so people know what the Jefferson Burn Rally is, but who does it benefit? Benefits the children that are burn survivors. We uh, raise the funds and awareness and we send it to the Percy R. Johnson Burn Foundation and Camp I'm Still Me. We send them to camp for a whole week, all expenses paid and they get to be themselves, and when they get to camp, they are around others that are like them. Uh, Where do folks go to come enjoy this route? Downtown Jefferson, uh, Polk Street and Austin Street. So guys, check out the Jefferson Burn Rally, October 13th through the 15th in downtown Jefferson. On the corner of Polk and Austin, you can get your tickets right there. Go out for a good time, for live music, all kinds of other cool stuff to do for a good cause, benefiting the Percy R. Johnson Burn Foundation and Camp I'm Still Me. For more information on the Jefferson Burn Rally, look them up on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Jefferson Burn Rally. Hey guys, Boston Chris here with another great episode of the ETX Rock Show. This is episode number 179 featuring Pat Waters. And guys, if you don't know who Pat Waters is, we are huge fans. Um, Cody Wayne kind of turned us on to Pat a little bit. And um, as you guys know out there, I'm a huge traditional country music fan. So anytime we can talk to a an artist that is trying to keep that traditional sounding music alive, that's something we want to do is uh, especially here in the state of Texas, where independent artists kind of rule um, everything here, the venues, the airwaves, and, and that's the way it should be, and that's why Texas is amazing. So uh, let me introduce you guys to Pat Waters, first time on the hey. ETX Rock Show. How are you folks doing, man? We're doing good, man. Thanks for coming out. Well, thanks for having me, man. Had a little old jaunt down here, nice drive, clear my head, and, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity, really. No, no man, thank you for coming. Uh, it's, it's always cool to talk to an artist that's, um, you know, kind of, beating the roads down and, and trying to make it happen yeah you know we've been doing it a long time and, and uh you know I always tell everybody you know of course i'm not a household name i'm not as big as alan jackson and, and don't really care right. to be that you yeah. know uh if i can stay right here in texas with my peeps and, and provide for my family uh and what a great opportunity yeah. a great way to make a living but don't get me wrong Boston. I mean, if I had an opportunity to try those shoes, I'm sure to try them. Of but, course. Uh, I mean, you're not going to turn down a blessing. That's that, for sure, absolutely. Right? But you know, we've been blessed. Uh, I've got to meet uh, some interesting people along the way. Places, uh, you know, been to Europe several times uh, because of the music, and, and uh, you know, it's just something that we're still passionate about, and something right. that we love to get up every morning and swing both fists at. Very cool. And speaking of the music, you have a guitar with you, so um, you are going to do a song or two for us. Tell us about the first one, and maybe a little bit about the story behind it. You know, actually, uh, the first one I'll do for you is going to be uh, Like a Radio. It was a tremendous hit for us. We put it out nationally. Uh, 
I got a little aggravated with the Texas charts, and I don't mind saying that. You know, I mean, it's kind of a a unique situation. Um, and I was putting stuff out, and I couldn't hardly break into the top 80. And, and you know, 10 right. years ago, I was in the top five every time I put something out. And I thought, you know, maybe my material's slipping. Right. So what we did is we uh, took it out on a national level on the independent charts, and we put this one out, and ended up going number four in the country for us. And wow. uh, so we brought it back to Texas, and. Uh, and uh, went to number 17 for us, and uh, very, very excited about that. And uh, you know, when you come to Texas, I think you'll realize that uh, there's a tremendous amount of talent here. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, we're very, very blessed. And a lot of different styles of country yeah, music. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's, uh, you know, we were talking off air about that, you know, on, on some of the B-roll, I guess you could yeah. say. Uh, you know, great music is great music. Right. Uh, it doesn't matter what genre it is. Uh, sometimes you may not get it, mm -hmm. but you do have to respect the art form. Absolutely. You know, but, uh, like I said, we put this out and we worked it. Went to number seventeen. We've got more and more stations buying into what we're doing right now, and, and we're very excited. Great, great time right now. We got a brand new website coming up, uh, mm -hmm. fixing to come online. Uh, we we rebranded, new logo. Uh, the new website already looks great, and I know you're still working on it. Well, that's the old one. Yeah, the oh, new okay. one's not up yet. Uh, okay. But. Uh, you know, bubble up. Same people that do Cody Johnson's and Aaron Watson's. They reached out to us and kind of wanted to refresh us a little bit. And uh, you know, it was something that I felt it was uh, uh, something that was really needed to be done. Right. And uh, you know, so or man, we're just riding this horse called hustle, and we're going to keep cool. doing it. You know. So guys, this is like a radio by Pat Waters, and make sure you you stay tuned after the song. So we're going to talk more to Pat about. Um, a lot of different things that, um, you know, from behind the music and where he came from and how he got here and all that stuff. So to check out this song and then come right on back right after the song. We're going to talk more with Pat Waters. All right. She's got a song deep in her heart. I love to listen, it ain't that hard. Always music to my ears. I hear it coming in. It's a sad one, better hold her tight Get a signal, let her on that night She's feeding better, she's long so food yeah, Can't you tell by the way she grew My baby's heart is like a radio I tune her in and I just never know She might be playing something soft and slow His heart is like a radio. Little static's all right for me. I turn around and let her be. We crank it up and we sing along. Our favorite pan water song. My baby's heart is like a radio. I tune her in and I just never know. She might be playing something soft and slow. Ain't in the mood for love. Hold oh, it again, sometimes she wants to rock. I turn it down and she needs to talk. I'm so close while she soothes the soul. Baby's heart is like a radio. Baby's heart is like a radio. <laughs> wow, that's very catchy. 
Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate that. Y'all yep. please check out this message from our sponsor, Mobile Audio and Video Productions. This is important, so grab a pen. We are Mobile Audio and Video Productions, serving East Texas and surrounding areas. We're running a special for electronic press kits, also known as promos or EPKs. For 496 bucks, with everything included, we will come to your location, film and record your band's live performance, interview band members, then create a professional package with graphics and effects delivered to you in the digital format of your choice, ready to be uploaded to your band's website, Facebook page, or YouTube channel. The packages we prepare can also be pretty valuable tools to send to venues, booking agents, or promoters, even record labels. You take your band seriously, make sure the world does too. Here's our number, 903-738-3881. Check out mobileaudiolabs.com. Find us on Facebook, Mobile Audio and Video Productions. Hi, I'm Lee Mathis. I'm Philip Griffith. And thanks for tuning in to ETX Rocks. And we are back. This is the 179th episode of the ETX Rock Show with uh, Pat Waters. Now, Pat is from North Texas. He's from a small town called Bridgeport, yes. Texas, which is, uh, I guess, between probably Dallas and Oklahoma. It is. It's actually, I don't know if you've heard of Denton, Texas. I have. But uh, if you go west on uh, Denton on Highway 380, it's about 29 miles. Okay. Uh, you got Decatur, then you got Bridgeport, uh, Wise County up there, not too far, about 45 minutes from the Oklahoma border. So you probably play quite a few shows in Oklahoma as well, right? Do, yes. We play a lot. Uh, we were at Winstar World Casino last night and uh, had a huge turnout. Um, it's great. We played Choctaw Casino in Durant. Very uh, cool. Do a lot of those. And of course, a lot of honky tonks. I'm, Man, I'm a honky tonk kind of guy. That's man. okay. Dance That's halls, okay. And, and you know, people get my band gets mad at me all the time because you know we got people wanting to book us all the time for 75, 90 minute shows. And, right. I love to go into them hundred-year-old dance halls, and of course we play four hours when we're yeah. in there. But uh, it's just something you're passionate about, man. I love to sing. It's right. like, you know, I'd rather sing than eat when I'm hungry, I guess. Yeah, I agree. And uh, one thing, you know, reading about you and listening to your your songs and stuff in my research of you, um, the word throwback kept coming up in my brain when I was um, reading about you and listening to your music and. Um, I, I think that's somehow going to be in the, the title of this episode. I don't know how yet, but you are for sure a country music throwback in every sense of the word, and not just you know not just the old classics either, like the Merles and the Waylands and all back then, but you also have this predominant '90s country sound um, that's so apparent when you listen to Pat Waters. And I know you've been doing this a long time, but this is not something you decided to do when you were young, right? No, I didn't. I actually. Uh out of Bridgeport, uh, I got a football scholarship to go play football up in Kansas, and uh, I always spent all my time, you know, trying to become a better athlete. And, right. uh, I played three years up there, and, and I remember laying on the grass at five o'clock in the morning, thinking, "Pat, what the heck are you doing here?" And I knew it was time for me to leave, so I finished the season and ended up transferring down to the University of North Texas to finish my degree. And that's when I bought my first guitar. I was 21 years old. Right. And I bought a $35 garage sale guitar, and. Uh, a mail bay book and, and taught myself how to play guitar. And then I answered an ad in the Dallas Morning News about a year later for the Wiley Opry. And I got paid twenty five dollars to go out there and sing two songs. I should have stopped because I'd have been ahead. Oh well that's more than most <laughs> opera singers make too, so yeah. you were already ahead of the game. But, uh, you know, we did that and we cut our teeth on the operas, which is, you know, it's an extremely hard mm -hmm. venue simply yeah. because you have an older demographic, but uh, yeah. there's no dance floor, there's no alcohol, they're sitting there sitting on their hands saying, All right, make me clap. Yeah. So it really allows you the ability to hone your craft on how to read a crowd, how to how to touch a crowd, how yeah. to communicate with a crowd, and, and you know, and, and uh, you know the Cody Johnsons and the Aaron Watsons out there. That's something very good about uh, mm -hmm. you know is being able to read a crowd and, and communicate with them, and, and uh, basically get them right there in the palm of your hand. Yeah, that connectability is really important. Yeah, and that's what it's about. Yeah. connectability. You know, and, and uh, you know that's something that taught me very very well. Those opera houses we did all over the state of Texas. Johnny Hines used to sing with Leanne Rines when she was just, you know, that tall. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Grapevine, Rocky Gribble used to play in Reba McIntyre's band and, and uh, you know, come across some great talent and, uh, you know, it basically allowed me to take that next step and get my own band and get out there and start pounding the pavement. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we talk about connectability on this show and typically we're talking about social media when we talk about connectability, but um, again, using the word throwback, um, the original meaning of connectability was, you know, standing in front of a crowd and connecting in that fashion. 
um, not in a technological sense, but in a face-to-face, -face, here's my music, here's why you're here, um, can I get you out of your seat and dance kind of yeah. connectability. And I think that's missing a lot um, nowadays. Um, you know, in reading about you and um, some of your quotes out there, um, getting people to dance is really important to you, and that should be in, a, in the country genre. Um, and I think that's missing a lot. And that's why, you know, I continuously come back to the word throwback with mm -hmm. you. Because it used to be that way. I mean, you think about the movie Pure Country, you know, with George Strait. That was the whole point, was to get people up and dance. That's why these venues used to want live bands. Sure. So, how do you think, why do you think it's changed over the years? Because, I mean, you've been around through the advent of social media and, and seen all of those changes. You know, I think that's... Uh Mainly the reason that it has changed, you know, with the, the invention of, of Facebook and YouTube and all that. I mean, you see some overnight sensations just on your YouTube videos, and, and that's good. Uh, but personally, me, I, I think that my approach is, is, you know, more solid. I think building a career, you know, it's a business. Yep. It's called a music business for a reason, and I think the way that I've built my career is built a strong foundation by, you know, eating up the highway, staying out there. You know, I said it a while ago, riding that horse called Hustle. You get on every stage you can get on. And, and uh, you know, it's a situation where these club owners want to bring in bands that's going to keep people on the dance floor, to keep them thirsty, to keep driving the profits up on the bar right. uh, sales. And, uh, you know, that goes hand in hand. Uh, but I do think that a lot of that is missing because of social media. Uh, you know, I would think... If I was a A and R guy or a president of a label, I would jump on somebody like me in a heartbeat because yeah. you're tried, you're tested, you've been out in the market, you're in the hardest market, the state of Texas, where the yeah. talent is just a there's a plethora of talent. Yeah, um, and you know you've kind of risen above. I always say my granddad always used to say work hard because the cream always rises to the top. You yeah. know, and we're finally getting to that point to where we're getting up there to be a core artist, and it's not something that we take lightly. We got to bring our A game every day to stay there. Right. And I want to grow it even more. But uh, you know, the only way you can do that is hustle. Get out there and work. Uh, you know, it's like I said, I would. I think I, if I was a president of the label, I would be very attracted to Pat Waters because I don't care if, if somebody wants to hire me at a VFW, I'll go play. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to hire me at American Airlines Center and uh, you know, in, a, in an arena amateur, I'll go play. I don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that our product is good. And I, I do whatever it takes to to get that out to the masses. And I agree with that. And I think as an artist, um, I mean, how do you feel when you're looking out in the crowd and you see the screens? I mean, do you think it's a good thing if someone has got their phone up and they're videotaping you as opposed to dancing? I mean, what's the goal for Pat Waters or any artist? You know, that to me, when somebody is, is actually taking the time, you know, people work hard mm -hmm. to get their money. And just the fact that they spent their money to come see a Pat Waters show is... Uh, it's a tremendous feeling. Uh, right. I have no no problem with them dancing. I have no problem with them if, if you mesmerize them for that moment mm -hmm. and, and they want to video that and it's something they want to cherish. It's great. Yeah. You know, it's like you run up and down these highways, you know, and, and we've, uh, for many years, we've done well over 250 shows a year. Yeah. And you finally get to that one show and you look back there and people are dancing and you look and they're singing along to the words of your songs. Yep. I mean, it's surreal. It really is. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, oh, time out. Are you singing my song? Yeah. You know, and, and just... Do you ever mess up when you hear something? Oh, yeah. Like that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, it, it, it's humbling. It really yeah, is. Well. Uh, because, like I said, it's something, if you're going to get in this business, and I steered my children away from it. Uh, right. It's a tough business. It's a cutthroat, tough business. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, it's something that you got to get up and swing every day, and you see people singing along to your song or dancing, having a great time, uh, getting the feedback from the crowd, communicate connectivity, like mm -hmm. you're saying, and it makes it all worthwhile. You know, it's the little business plan that you put in the back of your mind, and you stay focused with blinders on, and it's finally coming to fruition. And you're thinking, you know what? You know, it's taking a while, but it's finally getting there, and it's been worthwhile. Right. Heck of a ride, you know. One thing I, I read about. Pat, that I think is just unbelievable is um, you've been doing this well over 20 years. You've got at least nine albums that I know of, mm -hmm. and every single single you've ever released has charted in the state of Texas. It has. We've been very blessed on that. Too. That is unbelievable. It is. You know, I, I went to a, a radio station out in Brownwood, Texas, and 
I never really let it set in, you know. Like I said, we, we we're still trying to grow this thing, and and uh, but I had the DJ there, uh, a guy named Barry Rose, and the way he introduced me was a Texas legend, and I I didn't really catch it at first, but I was driving back in my truck thinking, man, how did you get that? Yeah. I'm not a legend. I mean, people don't know who I am. Well, you know, but that, you know, you'd be surprised. These are these are this is stuff that doesn't happen, though. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. You know, maybe you know, it's. I asked Willie Nelson one time. We used to do all of his Fourth of July picnics with him, and I said, "Man, I said, well, God dang, Willie, I said, you know, it's ten years into my career. So, what do you got to do to make it?" And he kind of, you know, hoffs. He said, "There's two ways you make it." He said, "You either got so much money behind you that they can't turn you away, or you just outlast them." Wow, and uh, you know that's what I call me and my band. We have a we have a uh, a joke all going. We're on the baloney tour because <laughs> you know that's a lot of times we my producer can't stand baloney. Yeah, we ain't making a lot. Of, <laughs> we ain't making a lot of money, but you know we're paying our bills and we're and we're okay, bringing it to the people yeah, okay. every night. So uh, you know we've been blessed. We really have. And I mean, for somebody who didn't really, I mean, you weren't that artist that was growing up thinking about you know music from the age of four. I mean. Mm -hmm. You really had, I mean, sports was your thing yeah, it for, was. for most of your life as a young person. Um, and like you said, you just kind of had that euphoria moment, euphoric moment where you were just kind of laying there and, you know what, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. It's time for something different. And I know you stayed in school and you got your degree and you got a major and a minor. And I was saying off camera that Pat might be the smartest person I've ever talked to on the show. That is That's a, a little bit daunting, by yeah, the way. That is negative. <laughs> um, but for folks out there who may not know, what did you get a degree in? I got a degree in marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, my major, my minor was in uh, B BCIS, which is Business Computer Information Systems. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've been very, very blessed to be able to just do music since I've graduated. And, and I've definitely utilized that marketing degree, probably not to the extent that I should have. I was a latecomer on the Facebook, mm -hmm. the social media deal. Uh, but we've got people that's handling that for us now. And, uh, you know, Bubble Up's going to do all that for us. And, and uh, it's necessary. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we've got. Uh, booking agents that are, you know, we've talked to some booking agents and, and they're like, well, we won't look at you unless you have 20,000 likes and you're grossing over 100,000 a month. And, and Which is ridiculous. And I'm like, if I have 20,000 likes on my Facebook page, my band page, and I'm dro grossing over $100,000 a month, why do I need why you? Why do I need you? Yeah, because you know, uh, obviously I'm sense. doing a pretty good job myself. Yeah, and it just doesn't make any sense. So what we're doing right now, we are, we have several agencies just kind of uh, catering to us with our recent do you think those people they just want that in place to make their job easier? I think it is. Yeah. And that's something that I don't I don't care about. Let's say if I got the opportunity to be on William Morris, right, which is the largest booking agent in the world. Right. Every genre. If I don't have somebody that believes in the product, somebody that is passionate about Pat Waters, I don't want to be associated with yeah. it. I don't want to be on a website. Exactly. That's not gonna help me. Mm -hmm. I would rather take an individual like I said, that believes in the product, that is passionate. Well, who believes in you more than you? Exactly. You know? Exactly. But it also hurts you. Yeah. It's kind of rinky-dink for the artist to be calling out their book and show. Oh, believe me, I know. But at and, the same time, you know. You know, and, and I know. Some, sometimes it must be pretty cool for a venue to hear from the artist himself, I would think. S there are, still are some venues that will not, not deal with agencies. Yeah. They want right. to deal directly with the artist and all that, and that's fine and dandy. And, and uh, but in order to take that next step to get to that next level of venues, um, it's almost necessary to have a third party right. that has your best interest at heart. Right. Uh, you know, I'll financially take care of somebody. And like I said, if I can find an individual that has that passion, has the worth ethic, that wants to work as hard as I do, and believes in the product, we will blow this market up. Right. Right. Now, speaking of the market now, um, you just, um, I guess your song just came off the charts this week, but man, we've been listening to Heartbroak for quite some time. Before I even knew, um, before we were even friends on social media, I was, I've been listening to the song, and um, it's, again, I, I go back to the word throwback. I mean, this yeah. Heartbroak song is a throwback country song that, you know, it's got the steel and all that stuff in it that it needs to have. And um, I think it topped off at 14, but 14, people are yeah. still adding this song after half a year on the charts. Yeah, we kind of got into a weird deal on that. I've never had a single do that. I uh, stayed out on the chart for six and a half months. And I yeah. basically called Dave Smith at uh, Texas Regional and asked him to pull it off uh, because we were in a, 
a no win situation, a great situation. Right. But we were having at 26 weeks, we we're having brand new stations added and putting this immediately into medium or heavy rotation. Right. But when you have stations that jump on it from the beginning and it's 20, 22 weeks, they've got to come off of it yeah. because they've got to make room they've for They've been playing ads. forever. Yeah, yeah been, and yeah. you can't get mad at them. You, you know, it's hard for me to say, gosh, man. It's kind of a catch-22, yeah, isn't it? You stay like, on you this thing. this great song and yeah. people are playing the heck out of it, but it's been playing for so long that people might be getting a little tired yeah. of the rotation it's of it. Just a, and they want something new from Pat Waters. Oh, they're, yeah. But then great. you have other stations that maybe got turned on to it late. Mm -hmm. So man, that's a that's a rough spot to be in. It's different, uh, not rough. I love it. Unfortunately, they didn't all come by and together, and we didn't ring the bell. Right. But we might on the next one. Because it might have been. I mean, that could have been top five easy if they had all jumped on at once. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's it's a process. Right. Anybody that wants to get in this business, I'm telling you right now, it's persistence. It's a process. Uh, and some of these stations, there's a, a tremendous amount of. of Acts that come through the state of Texas that won't airplay on these mm. charts and uh, hundreds and hundreds, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands. Yeah. And uh, some of these stations, the larger stations, well, they want to make sure that it's a real deal. Yep. So they may wait two or three singles into it to see if you're going to continue to put out great material before they buy into it. Right. Right. And then once they start, and I think buying a lot of time it, they want you to put your work into. It's a, absolutely you know? correct. And while they, if they're not gonna, if they're not serious, then we're, we're not gonna be serious. That's right, and yeah. and, and rightly so, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, if they will just follow Pat Waters around for a month, mm -hmm. they're gonna know this dude right they're here is gonna be, be busting his tail. They're gonna yeah, be, they're tired. be tired, and yeah. uh, you know, and we're gonna do it all with a smile on our face, and and uh, because we're that passionate about it, we yeah. love it. And uh, I mean, we're obvious. Um, we are obviously evidence of that. He just drove almost four hours to come yes. see us. Absolutely. And I mean, we're just a small podcast show, but we're extremely honored to be talking to Pat Waters today. And you mentioned all of these different artists that are in Texas, and I'm sure you've seen a lot come and go over your years. And um, this whole Texas Red Dirt thing has kind of taken the nation by storm, not just Texas, but beyond. Um, but there's not many artists left like Pat Waters in, within the infrastructure in Texas. And what I mean by that is, Pat Waters is not red dirt. Pat Waters is true and blue country music. and But there are other artists out there like you that are trying to keep that alive. Um, we just had one on the show recently, Kay, uh, Case Harden. I don't know if you've heard of him. I know of Case. I have never had the, the honor of meeting him, yeah, but yes. Incredible, incredible artist. So as someone who's been doing this a long time and still charting well, still getting all that listenership out there, um, how does it feel to you to kind of see the people not doing what you're trying to keep alive. You know, it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, I, I'm i an advocate of great material, great music, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and whether it's something that blows my skirt up or not, it doesn't matter. It's still great artwork. Right. Uh, there's some very talented red dirt. You got the Cody Johnson, which I don't really even consider him red dirt. No. I think he's more mainstream, yeah, traditional country. Yep. Uh, it's funny because I come from an athletic background and I'm very, very competitive. Right. And so when I go in and I open up for somebody, it's my goal and it's my, I'm going to try to kick their butt. <laughs> I can't help that. You too. know, I can't yeah. help it. It's just the, my, my competitive mentality. nature, my yeah. mentality. And, and a lot of these people that we've opened up for, we have. Mm -hmm. And they get a little aggravated. They'll go ask the club owner, why are you bringing in two headliners? That's not a headliner. He's on rotation here. He's here every six weeks. Yeah. And then, but I will say this, we did not kick Cody Johnson's butt. No, Cody is... He's bad, yeah. bad man. He's good. Uh, Aaron Watts is a, another talent. Uh, yeah. uh, just longevity. Uh, Randy Rogers, Wade Bower. I mean, great, yeah. great, great vocalist. You There's know? a ton of them out there. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, and, and, and I dig that stuff. I was telling you all fair a while ago, I'm one, of, I'm one of part of the hugest fans of Kid Rock. Yeah. And it's not that I like hard rock and that I like cussing in my music. I like it because of the art. I've been to about six of his shows, and this guy is very, very talented. Right. There's nothing on stage he can't play. Yeah. Uh, and he's very good at his craft. Yeah. And that's what I like. I like somebody that is confident, but humble, very good at their craft, and they continue to work and try to get better every day. Right. There's a, a lot of really cool aspects to Pat Waters. I'm really excited to talk to him um, about a lot of the different things that uh, mean a lot to you. Um, and as people know that uh, follow along with us on the ETX Rock Show. We really try to dig deep into 
background and the stories behind the music and where you came from. And sure. um, I don't think that's a, a side of artists that a lot of people get to see nowadays. I think it's just everything on social media is instant gratification. You know, and with us, you're going to listen for 45 minutes, I hope, and you're going to take away something from someone you like um, that you did not know before. And here's a couple of those things. Um, one thing I respect about you, Pat, is um, you are a very wholesome individual. And what I mean by that is when you get into the music business, a lot of different addictions can take hold, whether it's alcohol or dope or whatever, self-destruction. There's a lot of different ways you could go. Um, but you've always stayed true to a family man mentality. Um, and you don't really buy into a lot of those other things. When you go out and you perform, you come home right after almost every time. Yeah. Um, so tell me why you decided to stay on that road. And what I'm going for here is I read a quote from you that you were scared to death yeah, of all of that. You know, I learned at a, a very young age that I had a very addictive personality. Right. Uh, you know, just being sports, man, I, I just dove into it. I give it 100% myself, and I thought, you know, this could be a problem. You know, I mean, when I focus on something, I really drive hard, you know, to mm -hmm. achieve my goals. And so I've never, to this day, I've never taken any kind of drug, never took a hit off any kind of weed. And I'm not saying the people that do it, that's fine. They're grown men and grown women. They do what they want to. Right. But I was scared of it. Yeah. And I always joke with the people all the time. I said, man, I'm afraid if I took a hit off a joint in a week, I'd be on black tar heroin. <laughs> That's the kind of addicted personality I have. And I made a promise to myself that if I needed to drink or self-medicate to get on stage, it was not a business that I needed to be in. Right. And, uh, and I think the reason that I did it that way is because I've always, even when I was playing the Opry Houses, I treated it like a business. There was always a business plan, there was always a goal, there was blinders on, there was things that I wanted to achieve, and I didn't have any time for that mess to, to you know, capture my goals by doing that. Uh, you know, I've been blessed, uh, got a wonderful family, uh, very close to my grandmother and grandfather growing up, and uh, you know, I don't care if we get as big as Alan Jackson, I'll never find anybody that believed in me like my grandmother did. Right. And, uh, and my granddad, and uh, he taught me so much about work ethic and uh, bottom line is is that you can't buy respect. You have to earn it yeah. and that's what we try to do. Uh, we try to pe treat people the way that we want to be treated. We're very easy to work with. We don't do five hour uh, sound checks. You know, yeah. we could play at just about any any kind of condition. We're not going to go up there and be prima donnas. Uh, Sounds a lot like us. Yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, just we'll, show up and interview you. We have yeah, we're just going to get the that. job done, you yeah. know, and there's not going to be a, uh, you know, six pages of a, of a rider, you know, give us a dang hamburger, a bologna sandwich, and some water, and we're good to go, you right. know. I Same want, here, except bologna won't yeah, work. Yeah, I, <laughs> I want it to be an honor to work with Pat Waters Band. Right. We're not prima donnas, like I said. We're not, we don't have the big star mentality. But you care about the reputation that you're putting out there, and yeah. um, do you feel like the straight edge living that you've lived your entire life has kind of um, contributed to your longevity? Oh, absolutely. I think it has a lot to do with longevity. Uh, you know, I mean, there's different flavors, I guess. Uh, outlaws and, you know, they seem to have a quick rise up, you know, because mm -hmm. people are intrigued with their lifestyle and, and different things like that. Probably could have hurt us in that sense. Right. Uh, this goes back to a while ago, you know, uh, I don't understand why a major label or an independent label wouldn't want to have us. We've never been in jail. We've never missed a show. We're always on time. Well, you got to at least write that. Yeah. You know, write it into your song. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. You know, fake it till you make it. Kind fake of thing. it till you make it. That's I it. did nine years, you know, because I stole a car. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, maybe, if it, you know, I mean, it just. It just goes back to that old that. saying, you know, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. You know. Um, because exactly sometimes right. bad news is not good news. That's, that's exactly right. And be careful what you wish for because sometimes you get it all. And that's exactly right. And I mean, one reason why you know I, I wanted to talk about your straight edge mentality and not um, feeding into your addicted personality with self-destructive things um, is because you are the national spokesperson for, let me make sure I get this right, America's Drug-Free Promotions. Yes. Okay, so you have never done an illegal drug in your entire life, and now you're the national spokesperson for this 501c3 nonprofit. So, how did this come about, and why are you so passionate about this cause? 
I'm a firm believer as an adult that uh, it's our responsibility to get our kids on the right track. They are our future. Right. And I'm going to tell you, since the time that I grew up, uh, there's a lot of demons out there that these kids have to cross. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I'm passionate about it, because uh, I do believe that our kids are our future. And as an adult, it's our responsibility to help get them on the right track. Um, we started America's Drug Free Production when I was in college in 1988. And we started it with my head football coach, Dr. Jack Welch. And uh, we just severed our relationship. Jack has managed me uh, for the last eight years. He's wow. still a head football coach, athletic director at Coppers Cove High School in Texas. Coached RG3 in high school nice. in Charles Tillman. He's got six or seven guys. Stand up, good Christian man. And. Uh, I called him and asked him to kind of help me get my career back on track, and and it's kind of a long story. I took about a year and a half, two years off during this, took a hiatus, and I had the same guys in my band for 15 years. Loved them, yeah. like brothers, and uh, I don't have a lot of rules out there, but when you're out on the road, you represent Pat Water, so there'll be no drugs, there'll be no alcohol right. on stage if you want to. I don't mind if you want to drink a beer after the show. Right. I'm not your daddy. Yeah. But we've got a, an image to uphold and we have a business to run. And I walked out, I can still remember today, we were in Shawnee, Oklahoma at a place called Cowtown, USA. And I walked out after settling and they were out there partaking in illegal substance. I fired them all on the spot. Wow. I had to, to get another band to fill my dates. I got them all covered. And I just needed to step back and, and collect my head. My oldest boy was becoming a junior in high school, so I spent those two years watching him do athletics. And uh, then after the, he was gone uh, to college, I called Jack and uh, said, you know, I want to try to get this, but we're going to do it right, you know. So anyway, he asked me, he said, you want to be the national spokesman for that? I said, absolutely I do. And that's something that I've always believed in. And what we do, people that don't know about it, it's uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We go around to our schools in the state of Texas. We put assemblies on for our children, and we do a little country music, a little, little classic rock music, and get the kids involved, teachers involved, and then we stop, we educate them on the abuse of alcohol, illicit drugs, teen bullying, and teen suicide. Um, it makes a difference. If you can just touch one kid, he makes it all worthwhile. Right. You know, we're dead beat. We play four or five nights a week. We still take time to do that. We're just dead on our feet, but it's it's worth it. Uh, something I wouldn't trade. I'll always do it. Right. Uh, I don't care if we get as big as Alan Jackson. Yeah. Uh, I will take time out to still do these. Alan Jackson's not that big. He's only like 5'9 or 5'10, I think. Yeah, 6'4. <laughs> it's a big dude. He is big. <laughs> but you can tell I, you can tell you can tell I love Alan Jackson and, and, and George Strait and Obviously, yeah. And the reason being, it's kinda not on the same scale as the longevity. Yeah. It didn't sell out for anybody. Right. You know, they, In they, fact, I mean, George Strait chose to retire rather than to sell out. Yeah, and you know, you got to respect that. Yeah, and I mean, you know, sixty-five number one hits. I mean, what? What are you trying to change exactly? It ain't broke. <laughs> I'll fix it. Yeah. It's like you know, hey George, here's what we want you to do. We have this song about a tractor and a back road, and we want you to do it. And a tailgate. Yeah. 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 And yeah. George said, ah, I think I'll go home. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah. I mean, how many hundred-dollar bills, uh, suitcases full of hundred-dollar bills do you need anyway? Oh, I don't know. All I know is that man could put out a four-hour show with nothing but number one hits. And Think not about get through that. And not get through Yeah, and oh yeah, I know. I've seen him one time. It was in Phoenix, um, 2003, somewhere around there. And so this was probably, you know, 12 number one hits ago. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And I mean, the, have you ever seen a George Strait show? I've never been. Okay, so what he does is he'll put the, the stage right in the center of the arena. And he's got a microphone on each side of the stage. It's a square stage. And he'll go from one microphone to the next and do three songs on right, each one. That's awesome. So that way everybody gets a front and center. That's, that's great. George Strait. And um, that night it was Dirk Bentley opening for him, I think. And I forget, Amber Dawson, I think, was the other one. And we went through about two and a half hours of just watching him do that. And he still hadn't got done with... A song, like he still hadn't done a song we hadn't heard yet. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, what a I mean, track record. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, someone asked me last night, who's on your Mount Rushmore of country artists? 
Will yeah. McPherson. Yeah, Will McPherson yeah. said that. And I looked through all the different comments, and nobody put George Strait. Not one person See, that's put George Strait. what I'm saying. Strait. A while ago, they got to get off the drugs. Yeah, it's like, it you know, it look, it's an impossible <laughs> question and an answer anyway. The yeah. Mount Rushmore of country artists, it's impossible. Um, I think what I chose was Hank, um, Hank, Johnny Cash, George Strait, and Loretta Lynn. That's my Mount Rushmore. And that's hard. Yeah. Because you've got Conway and Merle and Hank Jr. and so many other folks. Um, but to be the only one to put George Strait on there with 60 some odd number one hits. Come on. Now how do you not? Yeah. You know, he's earned that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But so has Conway and so has Loretta right. and so has Waylon, you know. Absolutely. And then, like I said, that's an impossible thing to ask. Um, anyway, I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to find out why that was a thing because usually, you know, you see someone that's passionate about drug use and stuff like that, usually it's because they've come out of that dark place. And that's a dark place you've never entered, but it's still something that you're so passionate about. Yeah. Um, and and it, just from knowing a little bit about you, it's obvious it's because you love the youth. I do love the youth. I love, I love people. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm pretty naive. I still have tremendous faith in, in, in the human race, man. I mean, I do. I think the kind of way that I live my life is is that I'm a firm believer if you surround yourself with good people, good things are going to happen. So I try to be one of those good people, yeah. you know, and, and be a good friend. And I don't have a lot of friends. Don't. By probably choice. I'm, I'm not at home enough, you know. I'm right. out there working all the time. But... Uh, you know, the people that I do consider good friends, I mean, and I give them the shirt off my back. Right. They could call me at four in the morning and say, hey, I got a flat tire and I don't have a jack. Where are you at? Yeah. You know, and that's just, I, it goes back to my granddad. You know, you treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah, we got a lot in common, dude. Yeah. A lot in common. You were very cognizant about public perception. Yeah. Public image. To a certain extent, and to me, it's not really public image. And it goes back to being, and this is what I mean by that, it goes back to being a throwback. Yeah. Back in the day, your name was your bond. Everything about your name was the most important thing to you. And a handshake. Yeah, and it's so not like that anymore. Yeah. It's like you can tarnish your own name and somehow come out the other side completely okay. And it never used to be like that. It used no. to be you build your name into everything because it is everything to you. Well, see, and that's the way I feel about that right there. It's not my name. I was given this name from several generations Exactly. Before. And uh, so, yes, you do have a responsibility to uphold your family name. And, and I'm not going to be the one dragging it down, I promise you. Absolutely. Um, you know, are we special? No. Can I sing a little bit? Yeah. Who cares? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, me and you are just a lie, dude. I promise you, I put my pants on the same way you do. Exactly. One leg exactly. at a time. I've tried doing both of them. It don't work. No. I, I'm okay. too big. I can't jump like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't saying? have like, the vertical for that. I could get someone to hold my pants out for me. And if I was like 19, I could probably make that happen. Maybe if they were shorts. This is, by the way, this is probably the best decaffeinated coffee I've ever had. Thank you, ma'am. He just lied on my show. No, I think it's good. <laughs> All right, so we're sitting here talking with Pat Waters, first time ever on the ETX Rock Show, having a good time talking about where he's come from, what he's passionate about, and uh, we'll get to where he's going here in a minute. Uh, but if you're following along with the ETX Rock Show, you know we like to play games on this show, too. And, and Pat, we warned you ahead of time. We told you to check out an episode or two. If you haven't, then you have no clue what's about to happen. I don't have a clue. Okay, so this is called What the Heck. We're going to play What the Heck with Pat Waters. And basically the way this works, I'm just going to ask you ten questions. And I want you to tell me the first thing that pops into your head. I don't want you to think about it. Okay. This will be completely PG, so don't worry about that. Okay. Maybe my answers won't be, but that's that, okay. That might be okay. <laughs> All right, so this is called What the Heck. Number one. All right, so hot dogs come in packages of ten, but hot dog buns come in packages of eight. Why? Because you want to eat two of them raw. So you just, like, everybody in the world just eats hot dogs like eight with a bun and then two just by themselves. I do, yeah. I just pull them right out of the bag, cold. <laughs> so you don't even use the buns? No, heck no. I right. can't, I'm on a low carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, that might be why. All right, so number two. Isn't hitting the snooze button just reliving the worst part of your day over and over again? The snooze button? Yeah. I love it. You love hitting the snooze button? Heck yes, that's the best sleep. <laughs> that like seven minutes. Of yeah, I mean it's just it's just like it almost puts you in a REM sleep. 
Yeah. Just, just not almost, yeah, and then it's just you yanked out. out. I love it. Yeah. Oh man, wow, that's rough. I don't love that at all. All right, so if you don't pay your exorcist, do you think you'll get repossessed? <laughs> yes, you would. I would think so too. Yeah. Like because I mean, just be like, you know what? You don't want to pay right. me, fine. Now the back. That's it. <laughs> well, where do you get these questions? I'm not <laughs> telling you, Pat. That's my secret. All right. All right. Number four. Where do you think squirrels go during hurricanes? Underground. How? Dig a hole. I've never seen a like hole burrowing squirrel. Where do you think they go? I don't know. I asked you the question. <laughs> I just brute first didn't ask you. <laughs> I'm the interviewer. That's right. Pat I'm Waters sorry, I got that wrong. That's exactly right. Under the ground is what he said. I would like to point that out. That's what he said. Under the ground. Right. Under the ground. That was number four. And I have to scroll for more. All right, so number five. Now, Donald Duck never wears pants. Have you ever seen Donald Duck wear pants? No. Okay, so why does he wrap himself in a towel after he takes a shower? I guess where you can't see his butt feathers. Butt feathers. Yeah. But you could see them all the time anyway. He doesn't yeah. wear pants. Yeah, I don't know. So you think they're just that. different when they're wet? I guess. It could be. Yeah. All right, so butt feathers. That thing's, I'm going to call this throwback in butt feathers. That, uh, things that make you go, hmm. Is that, well, maybe we'll change the name of the, no, it's what the heck. It's not <laughs> things that make you go, hmm. All right, number six. What do you think cats dream about? Dogs. Could be. That wouldn't that be a nightmare though? It would. All right. So you think cats only have nightmares? Could. Yeah. It depends on they might dominate the dog too. Cats are pretty tough. That is true. All right. Dogs make sense. I think they dream about themselves. You do. Mm. Well, I, I mean, do. cats are just self selfish animals. They are. Yeah. yeah, they are. It's all about them, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it sure is. All right. Number six. All right, if, if someone gave you an elephant, now you can't sell this elephant, you can't give the elephant away. So what would you do with the elephant? I'd keep it in my backyard as a pet. We had the same answer from somebody from the same area as you last, last week. We're loving people. Yeah, so we're gonna have like elephants everywhere in backyards in North Texas. <laughs> Just because of the ETX Rock Show. Watch out where you walk. That's exactly right. <laughs> All right, so if a parsley farmer, I think this is number seven, if a parsley farmer loses a lawsuit, do they garnish his wages? Yes. Why do you think they do that? What do you think he was sued for? Quality of parsley. That's awful. That's, that's a thing. You guys need to Google that. Do not buy bad quality parsley. Because somebody could get their wages garnished. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, number eight. Okay, now you're a faith-based man, so you know that evolution is not true. That's right. But if evolution was true, why did sloths make the cut? I mean, isn't that proof that evolution is not true? Yeah, I mean, it's like a generation gap there, I guess. Yeah, I think sloths is valid proof that there's a God. Yeah, I mean, he loves everything. Yeah, because, I mean, if it was evolution, there's no way, there's no way sloths would still be here. No, it, 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 they're not part of the DNA. You know, yeah, I don't think word. so. And apparently, I mean, we've heard on this show that sloth suicide is also a thing, that they'll take their claw and slash their other wrists. So need, that's a little weird by they, itself. Well, they need to come to one of my assemblies. Yeah, at least have like a sloth suicide hotline. Yeah, exactly. You know, 1-800- Gross. 1-800-GROSS. <laughs> I don't think that's enough numbers, Pat. Yeah, close. You can put it as many S's as you want to. <laughs> uh, yes, that's true. You cannot put more than one O though, because then it would be gross. That's exactly right. And that's a whole different animal. It is, yeah. yeah. All right, number nine. If a penguin walked through that door right now wearing a sombrero, why is he here and what does he say? Hola, como esta? I want a beer. <laughs> wow, so he's a bilingual penguin. Too. Well, you say he's wearing a sombrero. That doesn't mean he's Spanish. Maybe he just saw the sombrero and liked it. Well, that's true, but historically, 
if you see people wearing sombreros, but they speak a little Spanish. Again, I don't think penguins live in Latin countries, though. So. Well, they could. South America. Yeah, South America. America. They speak Spanish. Okay, but sombreros are Mexican. Spanish. <laughs> but and South Mexican's America is not Mexico, though. Well, there's got to be some kind of uh, uh, Spanish descent in South America. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I'm sure they speak Spanish down there, but do they have sombreros? Well, well sure they do. They made it up here, and they probably made it down there. Yeah. They, they can go to Walmart and get a sombrero there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if you're in Argentina, I know we have people listening in Argentina. Please let us know by commenting below whether or not there are Walmarts where you live. We have to know if there's sombreros in Argentina. Um, and your neighbors over in Chile, if you're listening, let us know. Thank you. Number 10, and this is by far the most important question I will ask you today. If four out of five people suffer from diarrhea, does that mean the fifth person actually enjoys it? That's kind of a dual edge. He enjoys it, he's not having diarrhea, but he hates it, he's had to clean up after everybody. So you're, what you're so what you're saying is like is now I'm picturing like a household of five people and the poor guy that's like enjoys it is cleaning up for the four that suffer from it. He don't enjoy that part, but he enjoys it. He's not suffering from diarrhea. Best answer ever. <laughs> he enjoys that he's not suffering from diarrhea. I, I don't have to ask that question ever again. We just got the right answer. <laughs> Amazing. Guys, that was what the heck with Pat Waters. Um, <laughs> thanks for being a good sport. <laughs> yeah, he never said what the heck. He said things that make you go, hmm, and that's close enough. What the I heck? Think. How y'all doing? This is Doug Supernon. Thank you for tuning in to ETX Rocks. All right, so we are back with Pat Waters, and uh, we have um, retrieved his guitar again, uh, so he's going to perform another song. Tell us about the song you're going to do. You know, I, I was telling you when I first got here, you know, there's two things that I always bowed to myself and promised myself that I would always do if I, if I had the longevity that I had. The first one being that uh, if I was ever in a situation to help younger artists, I would always do everything in my power to do that. Uh, I got kind of snubbed when I first got into the business, and I, I didn't appreciate it. Right. And uh, kind of gave me a sour outlook on some certain individuals. And uh, you know, I dug their music and all that, but as people, I didn't dig them. And I always swore that I would try to help those people if they come to me. Right. Second thing I told you is that uh, it doesn't matter how long this ride goes. I'll always pay tribute to the guys and the gals that laid the groundwork. In this crazy deal called the music business, yeah. you know, the Earl Thomas Conleys and the um, uh, Bob Wills, and uh, and one of the most inspirational uh, artists that, that probably inspired me was a guy named Randy Travis. Nice. And uh, just because of that, I'm going to do the title track off his very first record. Uh, it's called Storms of Life, nice. and uh, it's country. Yeah. There's a dirty piece of cardboard. Taped across a window, my old folk. A six pack on the front seat, and a box of chicken wings. I'm dialing across the radio for a song that I can sing. Better change. Fading on the ball Bringing back sweet memories of Mama's farm Love is just a country girl That lived on down the road You know, boss, she almost had me turned around But that was years ago Better change my wandering ways I know I've seen my better days I always 
Okay, so that took me off guard a little bit. Storms of Life. A lot of people don't know that's Randy Travis's first album. It was not the Always and Forever album that uh, kind of made Randy Travis a household really name. Yeah. Uh, that's that. That to me is one of the probably top two or three albums in the history of music. Is Always and Forever oh, by wow. Randy Travis. Yeah, it's great. I mean, yeah. that was ten songs that just. You know, it was a neat deal. Uh, I'm very good friends with Paul Overstreet. Nice. And uh, of course, Paul wrote all of his hits, Digging Up Bones, Forever and Every Man, on the other hand. And uh, Paul was with a group called uh, SKO, Skyler No Block Overstreet. And uh, Paul is a very, very, very Christian based individual. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, SKO. That Overstreet family was one heck of a talent. Oh, yeah. Really. SKO put five singles out, all five of them bulleted at number one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other two guys wanted to get an endorsement deal from a beer company. And Paul wouldn't do it, so they ended up breaking up over it. He blackballed him in Nashville. Wow. So he sat in his house and he wrote all these songs. And Randy Travis was lucky enough to be yep. a beneficiary of all those hits. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah. Um, so Pat Waters, that was a Randy Travis tribute. Um, um, amazing stuff. Caught me off guard. Huge Randy Travis fan. Um, we're glad that Randy's doing a little bit better, and uh, I definitely follow that. Um, He's living up there pretty close to me, about. 20 miles, yeah, 25 miles. Somewhere near Wichita Falls. Right? He lives in, out by uh, Lake Ray Roberts, uh, Pilot Point, a little yeah. town called Tioga. Yeah. Yeah. That was close. Yeah, close I mean, yeah, an hour's close. Yeah. In Texas, an hour is close. It's real close. I mean, I got to go an hour to a CBS, so I mean, that's pretty close. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Massachusetts, though, so up there, an hour is like three states. I'm not kidding. Wow. Yeah. I could drive from I could drive through Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and halfway into New York. Now New York's about twenty six miles there, so I could get from Massachusetts to Jersey in an hour. See, that's on my bucket list, man. I want to go up there and see Rhode Island, Martha's Vineyard, and all that area up there. I just know it's got to be just a godsend. I'll beauty. send you some pictures. Please, though. you won't miss nothing. Yeah, please. <laughs> Except it's... the really amazing food. That's about it. Mm. So Pat Waters, first time on the ETX Rock Show. Let folks out there know where they can follow along with you, your social media, your web pages, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, we got a brand new website coming out, and uh, very excited about it. It's not online yet. I still got my old one up, and if you'll go to it, it says at the top, brand new website coming and all that. But that's the easiest way to, to, to contact us and, and follow us is if you go to my home page, you'll see links to take you directly to our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Spotify. Uh, please get on there and like us uh, if you do like what we're doing. If you don't like what we're doing, then that's fine too. Uh, and that's patwaters.com, right? Patwaters.com, just like you drink with an S. Right, and that is, um, people that want to book you for regular shows and book you for the, um, you know, the school assembly stuff, mm -hmm. would you send them to the webpage as well? Absolutely. You can go to the contact section of the webpage and, and okay. it'll go to our agent and uh, um, me. Right now. Yeah. But, independent uh, artists. The independent artists, you know, we do it all. But uh, it's not going to be much longer before we do have uh, somebody in place to help us do some booking. We're, you know, it's kind of crazy how you get the terrestrial airplay and and uh, you start getting all these markets and then you feel it turn because you know you you pound the phones, you pound the phones, you pound the phones, and you might go play for eight hundred to a thousand dollars, and all of a sudden you get this chart activity and you're up in the top twenty yeah. consistently. And then your phone starts ringing and say, hey, dude, we want to book you. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to act. What? It's pretty cool, right? You got the right the, number? The correlation between <laughs> yeah. that. It is. It's, you know? it's nice to know that that's happening, though. You know? Yeah, and it is. And it, 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 it makes you feel good that your hard work's paying off. And, and you hope that what you put out as a product, people are digging. And, uh, you know, so far they are. And, and uh, we're going to keep doing what we do. And, and, uh, and I just appreciate the people coming out and supporting us and, and allowing us to do this crazy thing called the music business. We're very, very, very uh, thankful for that. Awesome. All right, guys, so you guys have been tuned into a brand new, amazing episode of the ETX Rock Show. First time ever with Pat Waters. First of all, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day. I know it's a long drive, long drive back to come talk to us. It means a lot to us. 
Um, I'd also like to um, invite you back anytime. I know you're probably going to have more singles coming out, and Absolutely. we'd love to talk to you every single time. Well, first and foremost, thank you all for, for allowing me this opportunity. I really, truly appreciate it. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll grow East Texas Rocks and we'll grow Pat Waters to astounding measures, and, and we can say, hey, man, remember that time we did it? Yeah, Absolutely. That'd be cool. And, uh, but uh, I truly appreciate the opportunity. I do. And, uh Anytime I can help you guys, let me know. Awesome charity or whatever. If y'all need some kind of half okay singer, need to earn, earn some money for you. Check him out. YouTube, all of those places. Patwaters.com. He's lying. He's not half okay. Trust me. I mean, you know, it's what's the, what's it? Texas Tears and Mexican Beer. Yeah. Go check that song out. You will you will know he's a liar. Texas Tears and Mexican Beer. Go check that song out. <laughs> right now. Well, no, wait till after. Yeah. And then go out. there. But anyway, again, I want to thank everybody out there for tuning in. If you're checking us out for the first time, make sure you're checking us out or following along with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at ETX Rocks. We're located on iTunes. If you're listening on iTunes, please rate and review us. That'll help us out a lot. We're also on YouTube, Google Play. Just got added to the TuneIn app. Uh, you're home for all internet radio stations, so we are, I guess we're legitimate now. I don't know. Illegitimate? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's one of the two. I always forget. Yeah. Um, but thank you all so much out there. You can follow along with us everywhere completely free. This is episode 179, so you can completely binge watch or binge listen, almost like ETX Rocks and Chill, instead of Netflix and Chill. That's cool, man. Yeah, we're going to write a song. We'll yeah, have really? somebody do it. I don't know. I think it'll come out pretty good. And I will tell. I think it's a hit. <laughs> yeah. They'll play it in, um, you know, I don't know, Dubai or something. Yeah. We'll just pay them off. Um, but anyway, thanks again for checking it out. As we always say on this show, we want to thank you guys out there for supporting live music. And don't ever forget, ETX rocks. Hey guys, I'm Katie Lynn, and make sure to tune in to ETX rocks with. Austin Chris. Zaren Watson, ETX Rocks. ETX Rocks, Alan Fox Band. Hey guys, we're the Morning Madhouse. I'm Carter. I'm Brandon. I'm Ginger. It's the best podcast ever made mm -hmm. in all of history. Hi, this is Paul Bebo and I'm ETX Rocks with Boston Chris Barnes. You're gonna love it. ETX Rocks. Hey East Texas, DP here. ETX Rocks. Hey East Texas, we're Enduring House, a Christian rock band. ETX Rocks! Hey, this is Monty Pittman from ETX Rocks. Hey East Texas, Jaden Farnsworth, ETX Rocks. Hey everybody, I'm David McCarty with the Gypsy Creek Band. As always, ETX Rocks. Hey guys, this is Chris Colston. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. To the ETX Rock Show. The ETX Rock Show. Ho! Hey folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And I just want to make sure you support local music. Hi East Texas, this is Chris Wayne. And Crystal Clark with KYKX 105.7 ETX Rocks. Hey, hey East, East Texas, Texas. we're Lady Chaz, Chaz and the Tramps. And just remember, ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Todd Freeman from ETX Rocks with Boston Chris. Hey, East Texas, I'm Waylon Hicks, and remember, ETX rocks. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the one and only SP and Mexicano con estilo. Make sure to support your local music and ETX rocks. Hello. 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 We're one way home. Hey, East Texas, this is Teaser. Please continue to support local music. And always remember... ETX Rocks! Howdy folks, this is Aaron Watson. Support local music and ETX Rocks. Hi, this is Chris Colston. Make sure you support local music and ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Hannah Kirby. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rocks show. Tough guy! Ho! Covering music-related content of all genres, if it filters through Eastern Texas, it's fair game. Y'all bring it. From Texas, Canada down to the coast, and Dallas down to Houston, and everything in between, we are ETX Rocks. <laughs>